Dance hall is our everything. This is our workplace. This is our home. Dance hall is a culture. Dance hall is a movement. We all can achieve the same if we work together. Simple. Dance hall is an enjoyment. Dance hall is joy. Dance hall is happiness. Dance hall is all about grooving and entertaining yourself and entertain people and make you feel happy. You understand what I say? All I want to see is just unity in the dance hall. Simple, you know? Yeah, without dance hall, well, I think we would be nothing. I just encourage people who, if they're curious enough, to find out more. Because always when you find out more about cultures and about other people, you will get more understanding. Dance hall is freedom. Dance hall is free. Because dance hall is not something that just helps one people, it helps a lot. Everybody love dance hall from here and love dancing from here. Respect dance hall and respect the culture. Don't hustle the culture, don't sell out the culture. Because dance hall cannot be stopped. I'm from Jamaica and I like it. We party every day. The sun is shining, that's the weather. The weather. Now I'm in New York and I like it. My name is Ching Ching Ching. You folks know that I'm from Jamaica. Jamaica. Now I'm in the big city with a lot of pretty lights and I just arrived and I'm feeling the vibes. Everybody do a hustle just to stay alive. No, I'm at the stoplight. Taxi. Fresh in the place that the Prince of Bel Air. I don't know nobody, but I'm going somewhere. But I'm a rap star. Dance hall started in Kingston. Dance hall, dance hall started in the ghettos in Kingston. Dance hall is from the garrison. Dance hall it wasn't an uptown thing. There was dancing going on before, like Skia, you know, Rocksteady and all these things. Skia Nation, Skia was an uptown. Rocksteady was an uptown thing, but dance hall is an inner city thing that the garrison used them. Dance hall was it was a way of having a community radio, and then a lot of the music that was being played was music that they have was like records from America. So what would happen is that some, they, would, they, they would buy these records from America and then uh, like one per, uh, somebody in, in the community would set up like a sound system, like a record player with, a, a re record player with some speakers and it would be like a community radio because the, 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 not everybody could afford radio. So it was like a radio set up for the whole community. And then everybody would come in and they would listen to all these records from overseas that they would play and it would kind of be like a gathering. After a while now, they started to play the, the, the B-side of the... Back in those days, you're probably too young to know, but like on those records, they had an A-side and a B-side. The A-side was the song and the B-side was the rhythm, the instrumental. So what would happen is they would, sometimes they would play the instrumental alone and then you would have like the person who talks on the mic now that we call a selector now, he would like toast, they call it toasting at the time. They would like toast over the rhythms, over the instrumentals of the foreign songs. So they would start, and it, that, so that's kind of how it started. That was the first, uh, that was the beginning of the evolution of dancehall. After a while, people started to write songs over these American instrumentals. And then that, the next step of that was for us to, they, they started making their own beats. And then they started to sing over their own beats. And then that started the whole, that, that's, that, that was the whole evolution of the, uh, of the music, basically. <laughs> But the history about dancehall before, it was the, it was Yellow Man days, Super Cat, Ninja Man, Shabba Ranks. Those are the dancehall days before. They carry dance hall, they rise it, they rise it higher. They rise it, so the other generation after them, that is Bunty and Beanie, come rise it again. And the other generation after Bunty and Beanie, which is Movado Cartel and all of them, rise it bigger. And then the other generation after Cartel, which is Alkaline and Popcorn, still rising it. So it's something that have to keep rising from people who believe in it. If people who don't believe in it, it's not going to keep rising. And all these people that I, that I just call them name are people who believe in it. Hey, so what am I 
Mr. Waki, them can't send them. And the best of them, we over here send them over there, sir. So, Mr. Waki, you ready to take them back to the big So badly. That one I named Sesame Street in a color. I think I'm cartoon car. Ready, 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 ready. It's that time again when Bogla dance and kill. Get you get up. I don't see them as a dance. The background of dance hall is very important. Okay? Dancing start from Bogle. Mr. Waki, this is where it start. Back then, there were like female dancing in Jamaica. Because you'd have dance hall queen Colleen. You'd have females who are doing females who are doing the dancing in dance hall. Because back then you never have no dancer. Wasn't no dancer wasn't around, just Bogle. Well, Bogle is Gerald Levy, you know. That's a general right there, you know. Yeah, enough respect and a hundred thousand more respect and honor to him. Because that man shows that we can do something from our body and gain. He used dance hall. Dance hall is sufferation. But Bogle was the most influential in terms of dancing because he showed me that this is a soulful way. This is the way you should have taken this approach. And that's the approach I use today. Because he's the one who is creating dance and he's the one who is naming it and he's the one who is getting the highlight of it. That, so Bogle is the one that found this and know that let's do this. Buju Bantan, say as a reggae artist, first sing for Bogle. New brand, new new dance again. You fling your hand in the ear, then you rock, then you dip. Move to the drum and make your body kick. Step forward and come up back with that all the new style where the whole place I do. Rap bogle dance some music sweet. So it started to spread, and the spread is spread like a wing. Gerald Levy bogle. He also traveled the world and showed this thing. Bogle get is inspired by Michael Jackson. That's who inspired bogle for dance. The reason why that guy inspired Bogle for dance, that guy, Michael, nobody cannot flow like Michael. That's a flowing dancer. That is a flowing dancer. Everything that guy do, he flow. He's like in the fucking sky. He's like he's floating. Moonwalk is like he's walking in the sky. So that guy inspired Bogle. It was always step, move, bam, bam, boom, boom, boom. Easy, flowing, bam, bam, bam. Back to basic, bam, bam, bam. It was always nice movements, body composure, the groove, and everything. You understand? He was the only dancer back in the days that, that, that used to get like commercial, TV performance, everything what you see dancers do now. He was the only dancer in Jamaica at the time. For me to meet this guy, I wasn't a dancer. First day I meet this guy, I'm a soccer player. Me only see a Bogle on TV growing up. I never see this guy in person. And then you know you have like boys around him, Janipe around him, um, a lot of them were around him. So dancing was a part, Bogle was a part, Bogle is the biggest part in my life to make me become a dancer. But then he leave to cut foreign like two years, three years, right? Come back, the thing was different. You know, Janai find him squad. Then you have two dance groups in the, in, the, in Jamaica. Janai Bogle. You understand? But then and then it just started to grow and develop. Until it just started to develop. The younger generations then just started to come up. I'm very proud of my generation because it's my generation that made dancing where it is today. We, we, we took it from where Bogle left it. Bogle took it to the highest level and then we take it to another level and another level. And that is what we're doing, keeping it authentic. So I'm very proud. Bogle is like the Bob Marley for reggae. Bogle is the Bob Marley for dance hall dancing. You cannot take that from none of these guys. You cannot. What they have done for dance hall and what they have done for reggae, you cannot take that. Sir Wacky, Bogle, Chipella, yeah. all roses need a water, all dancers need a unity. We are the dance, Bogle's children.
I mean, Jamaica's hard, you know? People need a distraction. <laughs> People party every single night. There's like three parties every single night of the week in Jamaica. Dance hall is probably their religion on that level of where it is absolutely necessary that they, they do this. So it's a get up and go every night just to be in that vibe, just to be in that space, just to be in that dance hall, so to speak, on the level of where it is that the street is now kind of the hall. It's a sleepless night every night to do that. <laughs> you ain't getting no sleep in your bed. Seven nights, we go party. Seven nights, promoting ourselves. The party is like part of our workplace. Meaning, you have people like in their office works or behind the decks in jacket and tie. Well, dance hall is like our workplace, it's our office. This is our nine to five. It is now more a street vibe of where it is that you come to the streets and you express yourself and you're able to do that at each party. The parties, I think, it just promote. Dance hall is not only a culture, it's an economy as well. There's a lot of people that survive after the dance hall. Because when you're in the ghetto, you don't have that much to do around there. People don't know you that you're a dancer. So you need to go out there. So the parties, them, that's where you find promoters, artists who can do music videos with you. That's when you find uh, business, corporate people want to work with you. So these things. This is our job. This is what paying us. Tour, travel, teach, lecture, anything. We have to go out there in the street to get these people, this connection to reach out to other people overseas, you know, so that's why we go. In dance hall, this is what the video light stands for in dance hall. The video light, the dancers dispose their talents. The selectors dispose their talents. Artists dispose their talents. You understand? The, the parties play a very integral role in the promotion, the promotion of the music, promotion of the, the culture, promotion of, you know, the dances. Parties are very important. I see a major change in how the party is, yeah, is right now compared to back then, mostly because of social media. Social media is like for promoting, right? That's what we know it as. Dancehall is not YouTube. I think, you know, it has a lot of good things with it because it makes much more of the dancehall be, what can I say, it, it will let the dancehall be easier to find and to find the, the Jamaican dancehall and not only European, that people start to use the social media. And if you're watching dancehall from YouTube, if you can look to find a dancehall channel or a pandy spot, one of these raw cut videos that's showing raw dancehall, you understand what's taking place in the environment. It's not about just jump up, going and doing a, a dance, and then upload it on YouTube and say it's dancer. I see the people who get the most highlight is the people who are best on using social media. And uh, unfortunately, I need to say as a European that in Europe we, we use so much the social media instead of focusing on... Uh, Instead of focusing and studying the culture, we will more go on Instagram and study Instagram and see who's big on Instagram and, and believe that this is fully true. So I think my reaction every time I bring people to Jamaica, I have brought a lot of people to Jamaica, is that they get surprised to see who are actually the big dancers here, who are the people who, who are the best at the parties, who killed the party. Like all of these things always, um, people never believe these things because people always look at the social media part. But unfortunately, it's a really, um, it's really easy to be misguided even by the Jamaicans by only using the social media part. So it's like double. The parties generate income. I mean, 
I'm sure if it wasn't for these parties, that you girls probably wouldn't be here right now. Like, you, you know what I mean? That's why we told you dance all consists of the jerk man, the man that sells cigarette, the man that sells soup, the woman them in the party, the floss, as the dance, as the artist, the selector. So everything make up one thing, and that's dance hall. So dance hall is like our factory, and factory mean our workplace, spiritual. So it's a place of business. This is where the guy who picks up the bottle can make a money. This is where the guy who sells marijuana can make a money. This is where the selector can make a money. This is where the dancer who have no money, she can come and dance and get money, pull up and get money. This is where everybody can survive. So it's a means, it's a culture, a way of survival, a way of life. So you see, dance hall support a lot of people. I think the dance hall party, we have to go out there every night to survive. People are always complicated and people always show something and live something else. And when you go to the parties and the dancehall parties, it's, it's only a part of the lives that people live in Jamaica. So it's no game. It's not just about dancing. It's not just about music. It's about life. This is what people need to understand. It's not fun and game. It's real life. The struggle is really real. And uh, this is a difficult thing to talk about because, like I said before, the Jamaicans don't like to see themselves as poor people either. They want to see themselves as stars. But uh, it's still important to talk about because we have to do something about them making money from dancing. Because how can you be like how Black Eagles was back then? A world famous group and you don't have food to eat for the day. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know how to get back home. We have to walk home because we don't have no money. But we love dancing. We don't we don't, we just we love dancing. We don't we don't we don't we don't respond if we don't get a vehicle to take us home. We walk. But we wanna know that we get to this party and we are gonna dance and we are gonna walk back home. And uh... Even so, when there, when there are world-famous dancers, it's still hard to make a living from that. So we have to go there to get these things, because we need money in Jamaica, and we survive through dancing. So we have to go in the street to look that. The first time I came, it was a shock for me to see the first time I was uh, visited um, the place where a dancer lived because before I only saw the parties, the videos, all the nice clothes and how they carry themselves and everybody carry themselves as superstars. Dance hall is, is where the fashion is concerned. Yeah, you have to look your best when you're stepping out. As we as a dancer, we have to always look good. Sometimes not our dancing speak for us, but our fashion speak for us. Because sometimes you will wear something and you go somewhere Nobody don't know who you are, but your fashion, make, they keep on looking at you. And when they see you move now or see you do what you want to do now, they'll be like, oh, he's a dancer. But all along, they're looking at your fashion because it speaks for you. And when they cannot afford it, <laughs> they want to go for it. <laughs> I don't know how they do it, <laughs> but they do it. And then I was really surprised to see that, that they live with, with so low means and with low standard. When you look at the industry as a total, very few people are rich out of dancehall. You know what I mean? It's not like here. You look at hip-hop, there's a lot of rich rappers. There's not a lot of rich dancehall people. Women and men in Jamaica make money in different ways. Um, there, there are more male dancers who get recognized as dancers and get to teach and get workshops. Uh, female dancers can get paid in parties for dancing. But it's not that the party part is not something you can count on. That, that's something that happens sometimes and you don't really know when. But the female dancers can get paid for video shoots and, and uh, they always get called to do music videos. So when you're one of the popular female dancers, then you will get a lot of, you can get a lot of those type of, of jobs. So all these people need is just love and jobs. <laughs> I've also heard that it's easier for women to get certain jobs, especially women from the lower class. It's easier for them to, to get away in an uptown setting, 
to get work in a, in a business place because they're not a threat and people always want to see, like the customers want to see a, pre a pretty girl serve them. And while it's harder for, for a, a low class Jamaican male to get this type of jobs, so the opportunities are different from men and women. Yeah, show me some action, you know. All of the women, them. Yeah. Body ya, body ya, she a canna. 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 Yeah. Girl from your nose to your possess the wine, make your finger yo. Give me no bad that waste no time. Body wicked days, think when you are wine. So make a girl know she can't test you when you in at your prime. Whoa, it take it. No broke down my spine, so she feels so my heart Make me a trust me nine From you see me bell buckle how it shine Where you no see the shot, she a van It come in like Shammai Whoa, body a, body a shake on a Yeah, body a, body a shake on a Yeah, body a, body a shake on a Yeah, body a, body a shake on a Jump, me book a girl last night She say she a be booty by if it make me cry Me woman did a with me put a fan stand by Why she pull down me fly me a thing bout me lie Me never shy Cock up and, cock up and thingy you pan give me yeah Cock up and, cock up and thingy you pan give me yeah Cock up and, cock up and thingy you pan give me yeah Cock up and, cock up and thingy you pan give me so Well, dance hall dancing is a part of Jamaican culture so, and the dance hall culture is a part of the Jamaican culture and the dancing is an expression of, of that culture and the people in it. And when women dance in dance hall, they dance in a special way. When you become, when you get into the culture, you realize how actually opposite it really is. Like, women are very strong characters in dance hall. But the female dancing in dance hall is very sexual. The, the reason why I love it so much is that it's, it's sexual, but it's not submissive. There's some familiarity in regards to the fact that the gyration of the waistline is coming from Mother Africa, yes? So therefore, there is similarity in regards to the sexuality of it. I think it's just a vibe of emotion in regards to where the music is concerned and I think that's where it hits first. So it's automatic that the sexuality will come out once the music is playing. I think a lot of the female sexuality is in the blood. If you look at the, at the slaves, if you look at the pirates, all of them, like the female slave were valued because of the sexuality. They could, they could be used for sex and they could get kids, you know? And the same with the pirates. The pirates was known for being unruly. So, just back to the whole history before Jamaica is the Jamaica we know now, there were a lot of, of, of sex, there were a lot of sexuality and there were a lot of female sexuality. It's not, I'm here, I'm here to be happy and look good for a man and just and make a man satisfied. No, I'm here because I need it and I have something I need and I'm going to take what I need and, and I deserve to be here and I take this this space. It's, a, it's about claiming space. And when the dancehall queens go so crazy, they're, they're claiming, they're really claiming the space for themselves. And it's, it's, also, it's also showing your power, showing how strong you are and uh, how brave you are. I spoke with Orville and he told me that with the Rastafari and the reggae culture in the 70s, the female claimed back their sexuality. So if you, if you choose to look at this perspective, you will see female with a really strong sexuality, reclaiming back their sexuality, dancing sexual, because that's how they want to do. That's, that's in their blood, and it's strong, strong sexuality. It shows the, 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 the people we are. We are very happy, energetic, fierce, or feel like we're a bad man, and we show all of that in our dance, yeah? We, we, we feel sexy, the females feel sexy, so... Here's another thing that people need to realize. 
ghetto people and uh, dance hall is ghetto music yeah and that's where it comes from and that's basically the the, the majority of the artists in dance are ghetto artists when you go to a dance like nipples tuesday and you see some of the things that happen in in the dance hall somebody looking at like i posted a clip on my instagram and some of my uptown friends were saying oh my god that's disgusting what is that that's that's terrible but like when you're in the environment and when you're in the space you can more see it for what it is a lot of these people in the ghetto have probably never been to a play they've probably never been to a theater to see like a musical or an opera or whatever and they don't have props when you go to a dance hall a lot of the things they, they'll grab a barrel they'll dance in a barrel they'll dance in a tree like it almost it, it's almost like it's a ghetto theater it's like a ghetto play. It's almost like a stage. And this is their form of entertainment. It's almost like, you see what I'm saying? It's almost like an opera in the streets. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a theater in the streets. And all of the props being used are just things that are available and accessible. When you see a woman putting her head in a bucket and whining on uh, or whatever, and, and when you see people in a, a car tire or whatever, you know what I mean? These are just props that are available that they're creating a spectacle around, creating a scene and entertaining people from. But the fact is that a lot of females in Jamaica from the ghetto are poor. A lot of traditions from Jamaica learn female that the way out of the poorness and the way out of the way to be valued as a female is through sex. And a lot of time I have seen female who don't own their sexuality, but go out and, and do these things because they, they feel they need to. It's also restricted because it's just like how in Jamaican society, it's, it's there are rules and regulations and, and cultural codes to how a woman acts. They feel that that's the way out of the ghetto, that's the way out to get the jobs, the promotion jobs. Every time you get offered a promotion job in Jamaica, also me as a white girl, in most of the time, including that I have to stand in a little thong and go crazy. But in other ways, they are also told what to do. There's, there, it's always a male DJ on the mic telling the girls what to do. And most of the time, it's a man singing the song telling girls what to do because that's what he wants to see. So I have a problem with that sometimes. And uh, both men and women are supporting those um, stereotypical man-woman roles. Both men and women here support that. Uh, so I'm, I'm not in no position to, to judge it, but from my own experiences and my own feeling, um, I don't like when, when the males tell us what to do. Especially if you're a woman who don't want to do the female stuff. There's a lot of pressure on you. Like sometimes when you start dance to a, to a male song, they will say, okay, let's see if you bad, and then they play a whining song. Pull up! Look how many girls inside Mojito. And look how many girls in short shorts and thing. I swear, I would love to see even one of them girls bend over or something. XO, XO, my love is very special. If you want it, you can have it. But don't take me for granted. So much, so much, so much things I did not say. I'm from what more that's in J.A. we can do it on that beach there. You know, I, again, it's really double. I'm not going to say anything is true or anything is false. I'm just going to tell you what I have figured out so far. Unfortunately, I, I don't think that everything can be back to their strong sexuality as a female because there is a lot of expectation as a girl to be sexual and there are a lot of, of times where the girls don't have a free choice. Um, because they're poor. And you have to remember, you know, when you're from uptown, you have options, you have choices. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, you can make decisions, you can afford to be, have morals. I'm not making an excuse, but I'm just saying in general, some things that we look at and we're very judgmental about, you have to realize that you have options 
that other people don't have. So it's not a free choice. It's something that people tell them is the way they have to be. Um, so I'm almost sure that some of these girls do it because they need to do it. And when I hear about how a lot of the boys are looking at them, how a lot of the boys don't want to be in, in, in relationship with them, how a lot of the boys speak about them like, it's the same in Europe. If you as a girl are really strong sexual in Europe, yeah, a lot of boys will like your picture or book you to jobs, but none of them want to have you as a wife, you know? So it's exactly the same thing I actually see going through here. So I think, I think some of the female, they love it, they into it, they own themselves, they own the sexuality. But unfortunately, I also think a lot of the female do it because they need to. That's why I look, look up to females who are versatile, like outshine girls and dancing rebel, because she can dance powerful more than some men when she do the steps, the male steps. And can, she can do both. But I also admire her for doing both, because some women who are strong in the male style, they say, I don't want to shake my ass. I don't want to do those things. But, and they see it as something wrong. But that Dancing Rebel, she do both. So she's showing everyone, I can do this. I can be this vulgar and sexy woman, but I, ask, I can also be serious and powerful and, and uh, dance to the gun songs. And a little bit more. about really is that everybody have to listen to themselves and do what they want to do. If they feel like um, ass shaking and head top is not for them, they shouldn't do it. But if they judge it because, because, they're, because of different reasons, then they should think twice. But it's very important that everybody listen to themselves and don't feel forced to do something that other people expect from you because there is a lot of expectations and there's a lot of ex expectations from women to be sexy in a female way. But we don't have to, we don't have to do anything. So it's, it's not easy to be a female dancer here, I don't think so. A lot of time I hear a lot of Jamaica and it's not allowed to ask questions. When you see a lot about the racing, when they ask questions, they maybe get like beating or getting told not to ask the questions. And I think, first of all, they need to ask questions about the situation and how to change it. And they need to be educated because with the ed education comes the independency. So, if they knew that they could easily make money even though they didn't have the sexuality, then there would be a free choice. So if they want to be sexual, they could be sexual. But if they wanted to be themselves, they could be themselves. So yeah, for me, first choice would be education. So that would be like a change of system and a change of mentality. And yeah, it's going to be a long process. Dance all is an education thing. You understand? You go to school. It's like when you go to school, and you get your education, but dance hall, you get the real education there, so because it's a street. A lot of people have, lot of people have education, but don't have the street smart, you know. Street smart are the best thing in a dance hall. Once you have that, you're good. Also, I grew up as a gangster because every teenager in my era, you can't dance unless you can fight. So you have to be prepared to go on the battlefield and be ready. So I grew up very rough. It wasn't a playpen or a fun thing. I was surrounded, my community and my friends that I was growing up with, we all was doing one thing, which is violence. In dance hall, what I see is like, you have to rough, you have to grow rough. The friends that I was around with guns and everything, they were noticing I'm not coming to that side when I'm leaving school, I'm going to Bogle. 
So they started calling me bad name. Oh, yeah, go, go. Go, go is like a stripper. That's how they used to call us back in the days when we were dancing, coming up. Yo, yeah, go, go, dog. Get on, go, go. Yeah, wind up yourself like girl. So they tried to hurt my feelings, trying to break me down from what I, what is changing me from what they're doing. So they tried to break me down with those talking, and I was like, I feel fucked up inside. Forgive me for saying that. I feel very bad inside. See him? Because I see the guys them who are growing up with, thinking they will probably be happy for what I'm doing. They were like, throwing words at me like, you, yeah, go, go, you know, for that, yeah, dance, you turn, go, go, and I wind up yourself on everything. I was like, so my, my ignorance that comes out of me was, so what if I'm a go, go? So what? You get me? So what if I'm a go, go? At least I'm doing something good with my life. So all of them was laughing at me, vexing me and everything. So I was just like, leave. So every time they saw me, they were like, yo, you're a go, go dancer, you're a dancing bogle, you're turning go, go dancer. People in general say that shit to all of us coming up. Not even my friends, people all around Jamaica say that shit to us. Because in Jamaica, when a black man, when a black man rise, a next black man try to put him down. That's, that's coming on from ever since. That's going on from ever since. We don't try to unite and help each other. We more try to fight against each other. 2012, that's where I, I start to wise myself up and stop being a fool in dance hall. You understand me? I said, 2012, I see something different when I went to Russia. Well, you know about time, every school, you was so the thing set. Daddy never have it, he send me go prep. One car key me, you wash me, you press. Go a shoe, make a fit, the shoes get stretched. So when I see, when I come here and I see people accepting dance hall in a different way, yeah, me feel good in myself. Because Jamaica is a small island. You understand me? I say a lot of talented people is in Jamaica. A lot of talented people. You understand? And if dance all come from come out of Jamaica and Jamaica don't see it, we go come and we see it and we try to explain it. You're not doing anything for it. What's gonna happen? Because right now the foreigners accept our culture even more than our own people. This is our culture, and the best thing for our culture to do is to love it and share it with people who are interested in it. You should know, Everyone should love. Everybody just ah! the love and joy what people are for dancers and, and dancers. In Jamaica we don't get that respect from many people. One thing I really want to work on in 2017 and 18 is probably going to be a long, long process is the visa situation for the dancers. It's really hard for them to go away. It's really hard for the it's really hard for the Jamaican society to acknowledge dancehall as being a business now and something that people from all over the world um, are attracted to, because still here is a ghetto culture. So I think like my main wish for like the next couple of years is to work for the possibility for the dancers to be able to travel with the talent be able to earn money on the talent outside Jamaica. Because right now, we actually have a big scene around the globe of people who want to learn from the Jamaican dancers, but the visa office and the government tell them no. They keep them in this position. And I think we all have a responsibility of being in a privileged position because when I, I am a Swedish person and I have a Swedish passport and I can travel anywhere I want, and I can find money easily in, in Sweden compared to in Jamaica. I do think we have a responsibility to, to help um, make sure that the Jamaican dancers are getting something back from the dancing. It's difficult for them because they are from the ghetto and nobody acknowledges the dance hall. It used to be like that with the reggae too. Like back in the 70s with the reggae and the police took the dreads and they cut them off and you know, it's a ghetto culture, and the thing about Jamaica is that Jamaica is uptown and downtown. It's not like Europe where we're kind of equal. It's uptown and downtown, and the people 
deciding the government, the, the people of the office deciding these things are uptown. And they will always look down at the downtown. So they will see, a lot of them will see the dance hall as dirty and, you know, the bad language in the texting and um, all these things. They will see these things and they will say, no, dance hall is bad. It's uh, something we're not proud about. So when they tell, so when the dancers come to the visa office and they tell, you know, we want to go on tour, people want us to dance, they don't believe them. They just believe, no, there are people from the ghetto and they run and run away. So that's why they don't get it uh, a lot of times. And I think that a lot of Jamaican dancers are finding that a problem now that more and more European and other foreign dancers are becoming popular as well. Uh, and I, and when they become popular, it's like they're competing against the Jamaicans, but they can't, the Jamaicans can't compete against the European who have a passport that can travel anywhere. And uh, the, the European dancers don't need to work with an agent to take out a high booking fee. So I, I want to encourage everyone to, to think a little deeper and not to only think about their own position and, and really try to help uh, figure out how we can make the Jamaican dancers um, make money from their dancing, at least compete on, a, on, on the same level as, as what we can in regards to visas and, and the possibilities of traveling. Uh, because it's not, it's an unjust world and it's not fair how the system works. And, and we really have to remember, remember that. We have to remember that when um, when we feel like the Jamaicans are giving us attitude or because uh, some of the Jamaican dancers are really frustrated. And when they are, we have to, we have to remember these things and, and not only see it as somebody else's responsibility because there is, there is no government who will work for, for this. So we have to do it. All of us who love dancehall, we have to help and try to figure out solutions. Uh, to make, make it possible for the Jamaican dancers to travel and make money from their dancing. Mm, yeah. So I think for me it's, it's maybe like my main goal for the future and for the, yeah, for the future with the culture of dancehall. It is to work for them to be able to, to have it at their business and to be able to travel around with it. Go check your levels and me see it clear And me have the power to them fear Them can't stop me, no No way No, no, them can't stop me To the top of the free Dog, we stay up, now we stay up Why them want to see me drop and make them hard to stay up Dog, we stay up, now we stay up Them tired to see me face until them are your pain That is what I talk about. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. Love. We always fight for dancehall and always doing dancehall music. And even though if I get the opportunity to do other music, I will always be doing dancehall music. Because dancehall is my art. Because if I wanted to stop, I could have stopped. No. I'm not going to stop. It's still going to build and build and build. Grow it. I think if you don't know dancehall culture, you have an idea, you, you like it, you love it, you want to be a part of it, you want to experience it, I think the best thing you should do is to find yourself in Jamaica. I you don't know. We're looking forward to soon in Jamaica soon, so we can get the real knowledge, real experience. You understand me? I say? One dance class. This is not two. Dance all over everything. It can't stall. Is it? Right, that's yes, up. <laughs>